Hi, it's Craig. This is lesson number three on learning how to program in Python and Pygame. You should have already gone through the blank screen, lesson number one, and done that a number of times. You should have really memorized that and mastered it. Lesson number two was the stationary square. You should have built a red stationary square a number of times and just try to commit that to memory. This lesson is the moving square. We're going to get that square to to move. Um, the first thing is to uh, we're going to have to, uh, since it's moving, we're going to have to set a, a clock and a frame rate. So, let's go ahead and do that. Whoa. So we're going to set the frames per second and the clock. Once we start moving things around the screen, we want it to be a, moving at a constant rate, irregardless of the platform. This computer is pretty fast, so unless I slow it down, the square will zip right off of the, the screen. Frames per second, the number of times per second the screen updates, we'll set it to 30. Uh, that's a little slow for some games, but I, I like to you know, I, I like to to move pretty slowly so you can see it. Clock is just the name of a variable because it's saying anything. Pi game dot time dot clock to set up an initial clock uh, to check the time with. Right before the update statement, I like to tick the clock. So the variable name is clock. We're gonna tick it. Every time it goes through this main while loop, it's going to tick the clock one time. It's going to tick a maximum of 30 times per second, so it keeps this game loop running at a pretty smooth constant rate. You can probably write it without the clock and the tick. Uh, the, the square may be moving pretty quickly on your computer. Maybe a little bit hard to follow what that square is doing. Since the square starts off at the upper left hand corner of the phone screen which is 0, 0, if we move that thing down one pixel for every loop, or for every time through the loop, it should move down one pixel. At this stage we are, we're not clearing the screen, so I'm going to paint it all black. First need to set the color black. Lesson two, call out the colors. Cover the colors. The first number is red. Second number is green. And the third number is blue. If it's zero, 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 there is no value for any colors. No, no colors equals black. This is in the main while loop. Every time through the loop, I'm going to fill it in all black. The entire screen will be filled with black. Right after that, we're going to draw this red rectangle. It's going to start off in the upper left hand corner of the phone screen, but this next line is going to take it down one pixel every time through the loop. Remember that if you increase the y axis coordinate from 0 to 1, it moves down. It doesn't move up. It's going to look like the, the rectangle is moving down because it's the first row is 0, then the next row of pixels is 1. So if you start moving this 
y, the center of the rectangle y down is going to, uh, if you move it up in increment, it's going to look like it's moving down. It moves down. There's no bounce taking. It's going to move right off of the screen. Let's stop this thing. I'm going to create a variable for the direction. I'm going to set it to down. I'll set up an if statement. If direction equals down, then we do this. Whoop, whoop. There's nothing causing it to change direction at this stage. Let's just see whether it still works. Still moving downstream. If the direction is up, and we haven't set the direction yet to up, but if it does ever get to up, you subtract 1 from the, the y axis. Remember, it, the upper left hand corner is 0, 0. So the y value at the top of the phone screen is 0. If it's going down, you're, it's increasing in value. The bottom of the screen is 320 in this case. So if if it reaches the bottom of the screen, you want it to go up, or if you, if you set the direction to up, you want it to go up, and that is subtracting 1 from the y-axis. Let's check to see if it reaches the bottom. Remember, in the beginning of the program, I set the size of the phone screen, 40 times 320. The second value of this tuple, uh, when it's in this parentheses, it's called tuple. The second value of the tuple is 320. This is the height of the phone screen. For axis, this the second element of the of the tuple. First element means zero, second element is one. This will be 320. You can also write the number 320 right here if it's easier for you to see, understand. Main thing is is if statement, if the bottom of the rectangle is greater than the the bottom of the screen. So if it goes if it starts to go off the screen, we're gonna reverse, reverse the direction and set the direction to up. Then it's gonna start, start heading up. So if the top of the rectangle is less than the top of the phone screen, the, phone, the top is zero, set the direction to down. See whether it works, it might be an error. Boom! Changes direction. Now the square is heading up one pixel per time through the loop. Let's see what happens when it hits. Boom. Okay, the program is working right now. This ends the third tutorial for Python and Pygame mobile game development. We haven't gotten onto the phone yet. We will eventually. Go through the lessons in order. Practice this. The rectangle is the basis of the game programming. Uh, you saw in lesson two, you can blit a graphic very easily to the rectangle. So although the rectangle is not as exciting as a animated character or 
or some type of cartoon character. You can easily convert this thing into a graphic. The reason I'm using rectangles right now, I think it's a simpler concept to understand. All right, now go ahead and practice this about five times. You can spread it over a couple of days. Don't just go through it one time. Make sure you know all the concepts before you hit to the next video, which will be using some user input to move this rectangle around the screen as you would like to. All right, head, head to it.